there's one feature that we can adopt from professional products to make our own 3D printed models better, and today I'll show you how. This video is part of a series on creating custom 3D designs for 3D printing using a free Onshape account. I'll link the entire playlist below in the description. This installment is about learning a more professional way to handle the mating surfaces of multi-part objects, the shadow line. In case you didn't know, the vast majority of plastic objects in our world are injection molded. I've already got a full video on this, so we'll only do a very brief recap on how injection molding works. To make even the simplest of plastic parts, we need to invest in tooling or, as the name might suggest, a mold. At a minimum, this mold will have two pieces, an upper and lower half, and in each of them is an imprint of the object that we're going to make. When the part is made, molten plastic is inserted down a runner, squeezing it through into the extents of the cavity. The plastic will quickly cool, and then the mold can open, before ejector pins push the part free of the mold, where normally gravity will set it free. My animation is slow because in reality this process is extremely fast and efficient with the tooling being made to produce multiple objects in only seconds. Now let's explore some injection molded parts. Firstly we can observe some artifacts of the process such as these machining marks from the making of the mold and these round circles are where the ejector pins push the part free from the mold. We can also see this snapped off runner where the plastic was injected into this part. But what design features can we find that we might want to copy? Firstly, you'll notice that there's no thick sections like on 3D printing. Even this boss is hollowed out on the inside and uses thin ribs. And the reason for this is shrinkage. Let's say that we add a thick boss on the inside of our part. As the plastic cools before being ejected, it will distort and ruin the outer surface. In 3D printing, thick areas aren't solid but instead have infill, and since they're built layer by layer, we generally don't have to worry about shrinkage. You might also notice that the side of all these parts are angled in rather than vertical. This angle is called draft, and if we didn't have it, there would be a lot of friction on vertical surfaces as the mold tried to open. Therefore, we add draft angle to all vertical walls, which mean the mold surfaces can pull away from the part without any friction. 3D printing is additive manufacturing and doesn't require any molds. Therefore, our walls can be as vertical or angled as we like, and we can ignore this design feature. There is one aspect, however, that's absolutely worth emulating, and that's the way that multiple parts join and touch each other. You'll notice between parts that they don't butt up against each other. Instead, they have a small gap, which we call the shadow line. This is typically wide enough to just slip your fingernail in. Not every injection molded product uses a shadow line, but it's safe to say that the majority do, and it's something I think we should see more of on 3D printed items. You're no doubt wondering what this is for and how you might add it, so let's address that with some simple examples. We're going to start with this simple two-part box container. Imagine if it had some holes on the outside for mounting buttons or plugs or anything like that. Almost all of this is generated from a single sketch. I then extrude a big chunk and then extrude some cutouts to conclude the base. For the top, we start by extruding everything once more, hollowing out the center, and then adding bores and clearance holes for bolts to go through. Finally, a one layer thick false floor that we'll drill through to avoid needing support. If we create a section view of this box, we can see that the upper and lower half simply butt up against each other like you'll commonly find with 3D printed objects. To see why this maybe isn't the best, we need to print a copy of the box. And so far so good, with it looking like any other 3D printed model. If we put the two halves together, they appear pretty flush, but there's no three-dimensional features to help them align with each other. But that won't stop us from putting the two halves together. With this box being designed for M3 bolts to cut a thread the first time they're inserted. Looking from the side, we can see that there's somewhat of a small and inconsistent gap. So much so, that if we place a bright light behind, we can see that the two edges don't actually meet, despite the mounting bosses meeting on the inside. Apart from that, this box seems okay, so how can a shadow line improve it? To test this, I've made a duplicate, and we're going to add the shadow line. I'm going to hide the top piece, and then do a single sketch on the mating surface. The first thing I'll do is press U for the Use tool, and trace this perimeter. I'll then come up to the Offset tool, select the perimeter once more, 
and change the offset from the outside to the inside. I'm going to press enter and set my distance to 1.5 millimeters. And that's simply because this mating surface was originally three millimeters wide. So 1.5 millimeters is half of that. I'm gonna come back to offset and repeat the exact same step, moving the box inward, but this time setting the offset to only one millimeter. And those additional two perimeters should be everything we need to create our shadow line. Let's come up to extrude, select both segments, set our extrude mode to remove, the depth to one millimeter, and you can see we're cutting downwards into the surface of the base. Let's finish that with a tick. Hide the bottom piece and show the top piece. And we'll also click to show the sketch we created once more. Now one other extrude, this time selecting only the outer portion and extruding only up 0.5 millimeters. We can hit the tick to finish the extrude and that's all that's required for the upper half. There's our shadow line complete. Let's turn off this sketch and once again inspect it by adding a section view. If we zoom in, we can see our shadow line. The internal surface is made as before, but on the outside we have this overlapping lip with a small gap in between the two parts that will create the shadow. So let's print it and see how it compares. The black's a little shiny, but we can still see our lip and matching pocket on the lower and upper half of the box. And the first improvement we have when we put the two halves together is that they're self-aligning, with this lip preventing them from sliding too far out of their intended position. Now let's put it together and see how good the fitment is. We now have a shadow line between the two parts. Whether this looks better will come down to personal taste, but it does look more like a professionally produced part especially considering that it looks a lot more uniform than our butted up design, which still had a gap even though we didn't want it. The shadow line version probably has the same inconsistencies, but they're hidden because of the uniform gap. And when we once again put the bright light behind, we can see that the shadow line version on the right is the only one where the two parts are actually sealed. More professional in appearance and potentially better for keeping moisture and dust out. So already some benefits, but what about some more complex geometry? Previously, I made a video on this Lumimate torch, a 20 year old design that I finally manufactured with a magnetic base and a flexible light on the end of a gooseneck that allows you to illuminate hard to reach areas while keeping your hands free. This torch featured a shadow line despite the curved mating surfaces. For this video, I've made a simplified analog with a curved mating surface, but in a simple box design. This one starts life as only one third. This sketch used to extrude two halves, just like the previous box, before I temporarily join the two halves together, only to split them back in half using a curved profile. After that, a circular pattern is used to complete the shape. If we hide the lid, we can once again see we have a flat mating surface that will butt against the other half. And this is confirmed further with a section view. The 3D printed version is a faithful reproduction. But again, it's easily possible for the two halves to slide around and misalign from each other. After screwing the two halves together, we can see that the gap in between them is variable. This is in part to do with the stair-stepping effect of FDM printing, as you'll notice the diagonals are much worse than the flats. If we reintroduce the light, we can see that once again, we don't really have a particularly good seal between the upper and lower portions. We can also see that a slight misalignment is obvious where the two halves meet. Again, I've duplicated the design to apply the shadow line, and we're going to start a sketch on the top surface. And as you'll see, it doesn't matter that this doesn't match the location of where the two halves mate. I'm going to right click on one of the outer edges, come to select, and then tangent connected edges. That will automatically select all of the small segments that make up this perimeter. I can then come up and click use to create my first outline. I'm gonna repeat this trick again, right clicking and selecting all of the tangents, this time coming up to offset, changing the direction inward, hitting enter and going for that same 1.5 millimeter offset. We'll repeat this one more time, right clicking, selecting the connected edges, O for offset, dragging inward, hitting enter and inputting an offset of one millimeter. The same as our simple box example. We'll hide the upper half, come to extrude and once more select both the inner and outer segments that we've just sketched. By default, the extrude will cut down and not follow the curvature, but fortunately, it's an easy fix to get it to match. Instead of our end condition being blind, we're going to say up to part and then select our lower half. Now at the moment, it's complaining because we've asked it to cut, but told it to stop as soon as we hit the part. Therefore, no cutting will take place. But if we tick offset distance into one millimeter, 
and if it's still red, reverse that direction. We can now see that we're cutting into the part one millimeter offset from that curved surface the whole way around. So let's hit tick and admire our work. The bottom half is done, so let's hide it and show our shadow line sketch. Once more, we'll come to extrude, this time, like the early example, selecting only the outer area. We'll spin the camera around so we can see what's happening. And instead of a blind end condition, we're going to go to up to next. And we can see we're extruding downwards, so we'll change that direction to extrude up. Once again, we get an error until we tick offset distance. And if we still can't see anything, once again, we'll toggle the direction. This distance is way too large, but you can see that our lip is now extending above the object. So when we put in a better distance, like half a millimeter, and hit the tick, we'll see that we've got our lip required to complete the shadow line. Let's put on the bottom half. We can no longer see between the two parts. And if we look inside with a section view, we can see that we've got the shadow line overlap the whole way around the perimeter. On the printed version, we can once again see our shadow line geometry. And as soon as we put those two halves together, they slot into place and self-align within a millimeter or so. Now with the two halves screwed together, even though we know there's inconsistencies in the gap due to stair stepping, the shadow line makes the mating surfaces appear uniform in their gap. If those outer surfaces are still misaligned, it's impossible to see it because of the shadow line distance in between. And as you might expect, the overlap ensures that no light gets through and that means less chance of water, dust or anything else getting inside the container. In the LumaMate video, some people asked me why a shadow line? So let's summarize. Firstly, some people might find it more aesthetically pleasing, but obviously that's going to be subjective. Secondly, the overlapping lips of each half help them self-align and that might aid assembly in some cases. Third, a shadow line is much more forgiving when the mating surfaces don't quite match. And this can be seen in our examples in multiple places. And finally, the two parts will have a tighter seal, keeping out dust, moisture, and light. Depending on the object, this may help with durability and reliability. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to give this design technique a go in your next project. In my opinion, it's a little bit of extra effort, but the results are well worth it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy designing your own custom parts for 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.